Hotty ho, you handsome hunk. Grab a snack and gain some chunk. If your day is great or really sunk, we hope to help you shake the funk. So if you're good to hear some junk, buckle up, it's the Junk Monk Podcast. Podcast. How crazy was Monk this series? Finale. <laughs> Did we even do that good? I don't know. Guys, we're trying. It's our last time. How crazy was Monk this series? Once again, we're going to have two categories in this segment. And our first one being favorite Monkism. So that is like, for example, him liking the number 10. That's like a Monkism. Okay. So we asked you guys what your favorites were. And this is what you said. The first one is only drinking Sierra Springs, even if he's dying of thirst. That takes dedication. Two people said that. Nice. It's his. I think it's. I think it's his list of phobias. And when he gets a new one, he has to decide where to put it. Yes. When he's like, soccer right. Natalie. Natalie put frogs on the list. Put it under soccer rights, but above earthquakes. <laughs> on or, the list. Yeah, he has to put it on the list. That is a good one. Um, someone said, "I like the shrug thing he does. That's a. That's a good one. Like when he just. When he's like." When he's like got the guy or when he's nervous or when he has to do something, he does the kind of shoulder shrug. That's a good one. The smile when he solved a case. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Natalie and Sharona both know that all too well. The Sharona even says it when he comes back. She's like, don't, don't, I I know that face. Don't, don't have that face. I hate that face. (laughs) Um, Let's see. The next one is. When he says, I don't think so, when someone tells him something that definitely is so, <laughs> Toby likes that too. That's so that's one of Toby's favorites. So he's like, I don't think so. <laughs> Unless I'm wrong, which I'm not. Yeah, that's a good one. Have we met? <laughs> I think you said that before a couple of times. Like, really? Have we met? Like, I'm not doing that. Um, that he cleans his vacuum with another vacuum, then cleans that one with the little vacuum as well. <laughs> that one is so epic. That one is so good. His level checking level. His zen hand thing. The delicate way he touches things. Mm-hmm. Even if it burns his finger off. <laughs> he always says, hello, this is Adrian. Adrian Monk. <laughs> even when it's someone he's close to, like Sharona or Natalie. Yes, that is so good. Of course, like I said, his favorite number being 10. Here's the thing. Yep. His square pancakes. His square tomato. (laughs) Uh, Symmetry, just everything being symmetrical. His identical umbrellas by the door. Iconic. That's iconic. That is very iconic. And then these are the ones that you guys voted for the most, which is he's the guy that had two votes. Um, Wipe. Yep. Classic. Wipe. Wipe. I want a shirt that just says wipe on it. That'd be funny. And in three votes. See, I thought about that during the pandemic when we were like making shirts and stuff. And I was like, but does does that seem like you're asking for a wipe or you're telling people to wipe? Ew. I was like, yeah, that's what I thought of. That's Uh gross. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know about that. (laughs) Obviously. And then in second place with six votes, you guys said it's a gift and a curse. That's a good one. It's okay. a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse. <laughs> You'll thank me later with seven. That's number one. Yep. You'll thank, thank me, me later. later. Oh, that's a good one. That's our tagline. Okay, so my favorite monk isms are his note cards that he needs when he like needs talking points. <laughs> like in um, Mr. Monk goes to the office. Whenever he, I think it's that one where he's trying to like impress the guys. And so he has like the one with like a red tab is like swear words. He's like, (laughs) okay, so I need these. (laughs) Um, He also, whenever he tries to use slang to fit in, like when he's saying like hanging, you know, out or everybody's hooking up (laughs) or slacking, you know. Word, word, everybody word. (laughs) Yes, exactly. That whole episode's full of slang. I love that. But what was this one? um, Oh, it was in The Foreign Man. He walks up to the kids that are like at the gas station and he's like, wait, were you guys, you know, slacking, you know, off? (laughs) Like he just has to like follow it up. It's funny. Um, My honorable mention, my second place has to be, hello, this is Adrian. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is like the cutest thing ever when especially like when Sharon is mad at him she's like you know Adrian monk 
She's like, Monk, I know who you are. And like one time he's like standing there. She's just like, I'm standing right there. I know it's you. And then my absolute favorite monk is um, I can't barely use a level without thinking about a level, level checking, checking level. level. It makes but, sense. Yeah. You're like, is this level even right? We need a level checking level. <laughs> Yep, yeah, that's my favorite muckism. Okay, um, my top three. I I just love his catchphrases. Yeah. I have to be honest. His yeah. catchphrases are my favorite part. Um, I guess number three, you'll thank me later. Mm-hmm. Number two, wipe. And number one, unless I'm wrong, which I'm not. Unless I'm wrong, which you know. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good ones. I mean, you guys said a lot of the... I thought, honestly thought you'd go with the little vacuum that he vacuums the vacuum and the vacuum and the vacuum. But, all right, guys. Now, we're on to crazy moments. Crazy. Of course. Okay. So, in Mr. Muck and the Blackout, lobby, 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 lobby. <laughs> um, no, okay. <laughs> uh, that's in Lotto Fever, I think, right? Because she asks for permission first to be the Lotto Girl. And he's like, no, okay. <laughs> no, okay. No, okay. <laughs> In also, oh no, so the this one is in Mr. Monk and Sharona when they walk up 18 flights of stairs and then down nine flights of stairs. Oh, wait, no, when they walk up 18 flights and then go down nine in the elevator, that way everyone's miserable. <laughs> when Monk realizes that he's remembering his birth and he's like, There was this person and he was touching me. <laughs> And then I saw my dad in the corner smiling with a balloon. <laughs> it's like, Adrian, are you remembering your own birth? <laughs> it's so terrible. We also have jail goo. This is in the panic room when Sharona gets arrested. He's in the like interrogation room with Sharona. And he sticks his hand in something gooey. And he's like, oh my god, jail goo. Wipe, 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 wipe. And she's like, monk, I'm in jail. I don't have a wipe. And you're like, check your pocket, check your pocket. And she's like helping him... While she's in jail, wipe off jail goo. It's ridiculous. Um, when he was in the classroom and the kid was picking his nose. <gasps> That's in the pilot episode. Yes. Whenever the, the lady who plays lovely Rita in the first episode, uh-huh. she's like reading to a classroom full of kids. And then Monk has that turtleneck that he like puts up at his mouth, his nose. And the kid like looks up at it and he's like, picks his nose. and think, Does he eat it or something? So he like picks his nose and the Monk's like, Oh God! And looks, and then the kid like sticks in his mouth, and Monk's like, God! He like <laughs> slams himself against the bulletin board. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, and the next one is from Happy Birthday, Mr. Monk. They said, OMG, just let Natalie surprise you and cool it with the vacuum already. <laughs> <laughs> um, they said, I loved when Dr. Kroger told him they could talk about his sex life with Trudy, or they could sing show tunes. <laughs> they start singing show tunes. <laughs> If ever I could leave, <laughs> wouldn't be in summer. No, no, not in springtime. Summer, winter, or fall. And Dr. Kroger's just like, holy crap. And then he, I think he stops. And the Dr. Kroger's just like looking at him and he's like, if ever I <laughs> He like starts over. That is so hilarious. That is such a good one. <laughs> this one, of course, is from Mr. Monk and the Rock Concert. Where did I put that quarter? For the love of God, Natalie, where did I put that quarter? Um, when he wanted to arrest the urinator from the subway so bad, but he couldn't because they needed to arrest the murderer. Yep. On the airplane, when Monk repeatedly presses the assistant button, I don't think anybody put this one, but. Pete and repeat. Pete and repeat are on a boat. Pete fell out. Who's left? Repeat. Pete and repeat were in a boat. <laughs> Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. Pete and repeat were in a boat. Pete fell out. Who was left? Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one in itself. Okay. Next one. It, um, when the monk this this is the in, monk uh, takes his medicine. Med, yeah, yeah. When the monk is calling Randy Toy Store and then he's explaining it and he's like, you know, disher, dish, plate, plateau, play doh, toy store. And then yeah, and then yeah. he's like, yeah. 
Oh, Toy Store. Okay. <laughs> Toy, Toy Store. That's so stupid. Did oh your my dish God. play Plateau, play Doe, Toy Store. <laughs> Toy Store. That's like a Michael Scott logic right there. Um. Oh, I think I said that. I think I said that when we did this and see our season three recap, I was like, wait, the monk is Michael Scott. <laughs> it's so true. Like, there's so many similarities. It's so funny. Um, of course, you're bringing the monk down, man. Also, um, in the episode where he's taking care of Tommy and he says nature dirty. <laughs> um, when he's playing dom- dominoes and he lined them up instead of knocking them down. Yeah, he like lines them up and Benji's like, this is going to be great. And then Monk's like, yeah, and now we pick them all up. And he's like, no, you knock them down. And Monk's like, go, oh, no. And then they all go. Like, that was awesome. And Mr. Monk and the girl who cried wolf, the scene where he and Harold are arguing about the magazine placement on the shelves. I still laugh and cry when he says, I'll see you in hell, Harold. <laughs> it's true. That is a good one. That's the first time they ever meet. Yes. Yeah. Um, dog lick hand. That's yeah, dog look hand, dog look hand. Dog like you. <laughs> um oh I said this one in the in my favorite monkism, but his cue cards for every talking point when he asks out the girl in the power company in the blackout. Um the scene with Stanley Tucci when they're trying to straighten out the tape of the car hood and both of them realize simultaneously that the gun is available. Oh my gosh, that is so ridiculous. They're just like, Oh yeah, oh yeah, here, no, let me let me see it. Let me scrape that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, let me see the gun. <laughs> They're using it to scrape out the stinking sticker. It's so stupid. Um, I think this one is... Is this a naked man? Ocean in my pants? Ocean in my pants? I have no idea what that is. That's the only time I remember him being in the ocean. Oh, no, 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 no. I think this is underwater. No, because in, in the, the naked man, he purposely walks into the ocean at the end. He doesn't say anything. Oh, yeah. This is in underwater when the guy traps them in that vault. And the water starts rising in that little room. And he's like, Natalie, ocean in my pants. Ocean in my pants. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, when he becomes a painter and he yelled that Natalie was blocking his light. He's like, my Easter light, oh, Natalie. Easter light. She's like, what happened on my furniture? Oh, I put it out back. <laughs> it was messing with the flow of the room. I need my Eastern light. <laughs> when, of course, Monk was talking gibberish in the earthquake. That's a classic one. Of he, course. he literally can't talk. In the UFO, when Monk is stranded and he's like, I need people, I need people. Not these people. <laughs> and it's the group of nerds. Yeah. It's like, for the love, just any people. And then he turns the corner and they're all there. <laughs> Not these people. And then Mr. Monk gets fired whenever he figures out the case. He's like looking at the newspaper and he solves the case. And he doesn't, I don't think he says anything. He just starts dancing. He's in his pajamas. He's barefoot. <laughs> and he starts lifting up his pajama shirt. And Trona's like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm back, baby. He's like, what? Is, no, what is that? And he's like, I'm doing a jig. And she's like, that's not a jig. <laughs> it's so, That's a good one, too. When Monk is at the jail and he starts patting himself down. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then he finds the, the nail clippers. And he's like, whoa, what do I think I'm doing with these? <laughs> Um, and Mr. Monk and the miracle, when the unidentified robed monk, like him and Natalie are walking through the thing and you don't know it's them. And then until one of them stops to straighten a picture and you realize they're dressed up like monks. <laughs> um, when Monk is making up all the names for marijuana. Oh my God. I wish we had a list. Oh I God. wanted to write. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Did I write the list down? Because I wanted to write that list down. I did. I, I, wrote, I, wrote, I didn't write the list, but I wrote that in my personal favorites. Okay, Noah's going to find the list for us. The old Alibaba. The magic Dragon. Bumbalachi. <laughs> Yellow Submarine. Black Bart. Dr. Giggles. Kentucky <laughs> Blue. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about railroad weed. That's right. The Devil's Parsley. <laughs> Skunk. Splim. Splam. Mooster. <laughs> Side salad. Side salad. <laughs> Splug. Splim. Splam. Side so salad. <laughs> Side salad. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. I like that old Alibaba. <laughs> oh my gosh. That one's really good. 
Of course, we have the river dance. This is also in Visits a Farm when Monk is under the influence of marijuana. And, well, he thinks that he's, he's under, under the, the influence because it's like, what, burning? I guess the field is burning. And mm-hmm. so he thinks that he's like breathing it in. And he's like, oh, no, I have the munchies. <laughs> a couple of people said the river dance. I didn't remember the river dance part. I don't remember like, I don't remember him saying river dance. I think he's, I guess he screams it, but I don't remember. I I don't remember that either. I don't remember. I remember all the names of the marijuana. So, I mean, not all of them, but you know what I mean? (laughs) I remember him saying that. Oh, it's gravel. It's, it's gravel. It's gravel. (laughs) It's like, can you play 20 questions? Okay. Is it a mineral? (laughs) Is it gravel? It's gravel. That was pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty funny. It's like, is it a mineral? Because you always go like, is it an animal thing or a mineral, whatever, or a mineral? (laughs) Is it a mineral? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, the next one is from, I think it's the Missing Granny, and it's actually, um, Michael Shalhoub is a guest star, and he's supposed to be like from the Lightning Brigade that was like from the seventies. And Monk is, like, trying to get all up in his face and be all, I guess, I don't a tough cop or something. And his, his brother in real life, he's like, what are you smoking? And Monk's like, I've been smoking the truth, man. <laughs> Yells in his face. A couple of people said that one. I'm surprised. <laughs> like, I, was, I feel like it is actually a pretty iconic scene for being, like, not a very outstanding episode. Yeah. Um, Darren destroying Adrian's apartment in the panic room. Do you want some juice? There's an ape in my house. <laughs> that one is, no, that is pretty good. Because he's like in a, basically having like a dissociative episode. So the monkey's just destroying it. He's like, you want some juice? I have an ape in my house. <laughs> oh man, that's so good. Um, Willie Nelson's bus. When he walks on the bus, he smells something funny. And he's like, what is that smell? And he knows what it is. And Willie's like, don't ask. <laughs> Um, sending his trash to Dr. Kroger during the garbage strike. That is a good one. I'm not going to lie. Like, that's not one of my favorite episodes, but that is a very good, crazy moment. He's like, because Dr. Kroger's like, Adrian, have you been sending me trash? And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, it's like color coded and (laughs) it's it's perfectly packaged. And he's like, you've been sending it to my house. It's disturbing my family and it needs to stop. (laughs) <laughs> and he tries to mail it at the beginning of the episode and the guy's like he's like yeah just send it anywhere he's like i can't just send it anywhere he's like just send it to your place <laughs> it's like, what? oh my gosh it's so bad um when he's going to burn his hand after touching the leper because he shakes the leper's hand and then he figures out it's the leper he comes home and he tries to light his hand on fire oh yeah um during the garbage strike one bag at a time, one truck at a time. One bag at a time, time one truck at a time. time. Oh, this was Lindsay's favorite one. Whenever, I don't remember the episode. It might be in Vegas when him and Natalie are in an elevator. And I don't know if she's trying to get him to do something different, like go out of his comfort zone. And, or what does she say? I think he might say like, you know, the old saying, don't change anything ever. And she's like, that's not a saying. And he's like, I say it all the time. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. So no surprise here for your guy's favorite crazy moment, because it was the same as your favorite summation. And that is the antique wingback Cusack chair. Alice Cooper, like all rock stars, was an avid collector of antique wingback chairs. No, duh. Well, why didn't he take the chair? Because <laughs> it had a hole in it. <laughs> so stupid oh my gosh (laughs) monk had the best crazy moments of all time some of my personal ones were the jig oh and the name names for the weed i like the old alibaba i feel like that sells the like old alibaba like when his voice gets all deep it's so funny bambala cheese splam splam (laughs) that's the best one splam splam You know what I'm talking about. Kentucky, what is it? Kentucky blue. Ditchweed. 
Like, it's so, oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay, and then my second all-time favorite Crazy Muck moment has to be, if ever I would oh my leave God. You. Wouldn't be in summer. <laughs> that is so funny. And it's it's like one of those moments Dr. Kroger is like amazing because he's like, you know what, Adrian? We've never talked about this. And, you know, we could sit here and be adults and talk about your sex life. Or we could sit here and sing show tunes all day. And then Monk is like, I will take you up on that <laughs> offer because I will not. It is so funny. Okay. My number one favorite I would like to see if you could find this one, but it has got to be number one without a question. And Mr. Monk gets a new shrink. When Dr. Kroger is quitting, Monk's five stages of grief. Okay, so it's not true. You're not retiring. I mean, you can't because he, he, he can't retire. Because this is step one <laughs> in the grieving process. He denial, denial, yeah. Damn you to hell! I hate you. I hate you! You are dead to me. <laughs> that's not denial. No, step two, that's anger. Okay. Okay, we're all adults here. We can work this out. I can hire you full time. I put you on the payroll. Uh, this is step three, it's bargaining. It, it usually doesn't go around this quickly. Why me? Why is it always me? <laughs> Everybody's always leaving me. Depression. Just can't go on. It's just too much. Okay, can't go on. You're right. Okay. It's not the end of the world. I'm just gonna have to find another doctor. I owe you so much. Thanks to you. I think I can't get past this. Thanks, Doc. And finally accept us. Thank God that's over. He can't retire. The man can't quit. Because he's not a quitter. Well, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like he's starting all over again, like he's in a loop. I hate you for this, Kroger! <laughs> you are dead to me! Do you understand me? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That is it. <laughs> that is the craziest monk moment. Can't quit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why does everybody always leave me? Okay. No big deal. Damn you. Damn you to hell. I hate your guts. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, Noah, what are your favorite crazy moments? Um, obviously, the antique wing record sack chair. Oh, really? Yes, the Alice Cooper theory. Who doesn't love that? What? Okay. The doy, okay. the doy. Um, and Mr. Monk and Sharona, 18 flights up, and 9 flights down. They should have just gone up in the elevator and down. Wait, no. Yeah, up in the elevator and down on the stairs. That makes the most sense. Why? That, that's crazy. I'll give you that one. <laughs> a monk couldn't figure that one out. Um, And the monk calling Randy toy store. <laughs> Duh. Disher, dish, plate, plateau, play dough, toy store. <laughs> oh my gosh. I like how he stops at toy store. Like he could have kept going. To come up with something, like, a little better, and then he's like, Toy Store. That's <laughs> done. It sounded improvised. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Toy Store. <laughs> okay, guys, those were our favorite Crazy Monk moments and yours. So we're on to our final segment of the Junk Monk podcast. Can you believe this is happening? Ever. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. This series. Ooh. This is our last ever. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my okay. god. It's happening. Okay. So what we're gonna do is just like we did for curses, and we said all of the names of the episodes that you guys had said were your least favorite. We're gonna mention every episode you guys said. So someone out there on this face of this planet Earth, this is their favorite monk episode. Okay, are we ready? Okay. Okay. The pilot. Okay, the end. I could see both of those. Yeah. Just being Duh. very standard classic. The rapper. Three votes. Three wow. votes. Naked man. Two votes. Joins a cult with two votes. I could see that. That's a fun, like... Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? That episode is actually really underrated. It has that really good scene when Dr. Kroger gets him out of the... 
yes. cult. And he's like, what would Trudy th- say? Oh, that's so good. That is really Why good. Why are we crying whenever we watch that? Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. That's a really, that is a really good one. Bad Girlfriend? Um, Happy Birthday, Mr. Monk, with two votes. I'm actually really surprised that has two votes. Why? I mean, I just, I feel like even like all of our listeners, whenever they joined us, like nobody gave that a 10. Yeah. Like it was, it was a really fun like premise and surprise, but other than that, it was a pretty mediocre episode. I agree. I agree. Takes the stand. Uh, the big game with two votes. Takes the stand as someone's favorite episode. Why? I don't know. Okay. That doesn't make sense. Mexico. Fun one. I could see that. Stuck in traffic. I, at least people must I, like corn a I lot. These <laughs> <laughs> people are corn crazy, okay? Uh, you have the blackout. Oh, that has two votes. Um, foreign man. Also has two votes. I can see that. That's my mom's favorite. Um, panic room. With the monkey. That one's a fun one, too. Secret Santa. Okay. I could see that, yeah. Game show. Yep, that's a good, that's a really good one. Rock concert. No. Yeah. What? No. Wow. That's kind of crazy. No. That's a typo. <laughs> Let's type in rock concert and see what words it autocorrected for. <laughs> How oh. is that? The only, the redeeming quality, Sotomayor and Jared. That is all. That's pretty much it. Ugh. Um, meets his dad. Why? <laughs> Again, it's like, I always go back to like, uh, it's a Christmas episode and I'm like, just on Christmas episodes, there's at least two that are better than that. Yeah. And you said that it was the best episode out of the whole series. Am I missing something? That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Earthquake? Okay. I like that. Goes to the farm. Mm. I don't... I don't dis... I feel like, like it, it has a lot of high funny parts, but also a lot of boring, boring mediocre parts. I agree, yeah. The Three Julies. That's... Valid. That's valid. Valid. Very valid. Um, Back to school. I personally don't like this episode very much, but I can see very valid season two opener. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jury duty with two votes. I can't believe it only has two. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's definitely a great episode. Gets married has three votes. Okay. That's a good one. That is a good one. Um, At your service. Yep. Someone's favorite episode. Good job. Did good job. <laughs> did, did I submit? No, I, I guess I didn't submit. <laughs> Don't worry. But one other person said that, so you're in. There you go. Um, up all night. Only one. Only one person said up all night. That's surprising, actually. I love up all night. Bumps' head has three. Huh. Which is why I was surprised it was on people's least favorite. Yeah. But I get it because of the core of vibes. Yeah. Um, I actually don't get it. I actually don't get why that'd be your favorite episode. Yeah. I feel like it's just a solid episode. I wouldn't it's say not that. A gr- it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, Three Pies. That's with Ambrose. First time we meet Ambrose. That is a fantastic episode. I can see that for sure. Biggest fan. Okay. Great episode. Yep. Marcy. Um, gets drunk. I see it. I yep, see it. Yep. Very good episode. Can't see a thing. Uh. I, that's why. What, well, honestly, that I don't. See, well, I don't see it as a favorite, but. I remember being really excited to watch this one, and that was the one that Q was on, and I was like, oh, that episode wasn't as good as I remembered it being. Uh-huh. So that's one of the few times that that's happened. Usually it's the other way around. But yeah, I'm definitely not favorite. For yeah. Sure. The theater? That's a good one. Excellent one, yep. Um, Cabin Fever. I do you, the, the good thing, okay, I actually really like the double summation, but I also really like Randy's storyline. I love the fortune cookie thing. What I think lacks is Monk's case where he's solving the murder of the husband that's across the street. Yeah. That's what's wrong with that episode, I think. Yeah. So I like Randy's stuff. So Cobra. Oh my gosh. That has to. That's a little to, shocking. That's a typo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say that's a, guys, that's a typo. Cobra's I don't know why. It's not that bad, but. I, for me, again, the redeeming quality is the Trudy scene. That's the only thing that, for me, makes it not my least favorite. If that wasn't there, I would be like, yeah, that episode is horrible. But I really like the Trudy scene. I usually cry every time I see it. And so I'm like, dang it. Wait, what Trudy scene? When Monk gets buried underground. 
he hallucinates oh, her. Oh. And they're like in the park good. together that's and good. stuff. Yeah. Um, the circus. Great episode. Yeah. Classic. The bank. Great episode. Great episode. Um, mm-hmm. really dead guy. Oh, that's on my least favorite list. Yeah, why would you? The actor got three. That makes sense. Stanley Tucci. Okay. It does. Um, Garbage Strike with two. Garbage Strike only got two. That, sound, that sounds like a typo within itself. <laughs> For real. Everybody loved the summation, but not the episode as much. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. On wheels. On wheels. Well, I guess only one person said it, so that makes sense. Gets a new shrink that has the grief, five stages of grief, so I could see how you could definitely have that as a standout. Um, Very old man. No. That should not be no one's favorite episode. <laughs> uh, fashion show? That should also be yes. no one's favorite episode. Yo, Unless you like the villain? Like, what's his name? Something? Oh, I forgot his name. But apparently, like, Emmy Clark really enjoyed working with him. The guy that played Julian Hodges. But I don't remember his, his real name. Apparently, they really liked him. Like, he did his thing, I said. And he was really cool and professional and stuff. I didn't like that episode, but... <laughs> Cried Wolf. Ooh. Good one. That is a good one. Um, Man Who Shot Santa. <laughs> that is someone's favorite episode. <laughs> someone's trying to get slapped. <laughs> the Dentist. That's also someone's favorite episode. Okay, but redeeming quality is Randy Disher Project. I agree. I was if... going to say John Favreau, but... Oh, well, that's another one, too. Again, if you like, if you like something about it... I can I see it, but also like it's your favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's a little messed up. Takes a vacation. I think that's a popular one. I Is honestly this? thought that more people were gonna say that, so maybe I'm wrong about it being a popular one. But I mean, I think like in the first season, this is the one that they like submitted for Emmys and won like screenplay awards and stuff like that. So oh, wow, yeah. The astronaut with two votes. Two votes. I thought there was gonna be more. Me too. But a lot of people did say him as the villain. So, didn't they? Yeah, the astronaut was number two with nine votes. So, villain. They like the villain more than the episode, which makes sense. The UFO got two votes. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Monk. Ooh, that's on your least favorite. That is on my least favorite. Buys a house. Why? Yikes. A hundredth case. I could see that. Like, I mean, it's just a fun episode in general. Definitely not the best, but... Um, The Miracle with three votes. Oh, we're in the list now. Oh, yeah, we're on the vote votes. Highest votes. Um, The Miracle has three votes. Okay. I would say it's a strong Christmas episode. <laughs> yeah. On the Run with four votes. Okay. Uh, okay. Takes his medicine with five votes. Uh... Favorite episode, though? Like... That's Denise's favorite episode. Yeah, but... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but she's one person. <laughs> There's four more. <laughs> the dog with five votes. The leper with five votes. Did the leper not have five votes for least favorite? I think it did. I think it did. That is crazy. With six votes, Mr. Monk and the airplane... That's pretty good. That is very interesting, if I'm being honest. And the number one most like episode with 10 votes is Mr. Monk and the Kid. That makes sense. That's understandable. That honestly makes a lot of sense. 10 votes. I'm very surprised Airplane was number two. Yeah. I do think it's a really great episode. I'm just surprised that so many other people like thought it. I always thought like... I was the per like I was one that was like that's a good one and other people didn't think so uh-huh. as much you know, but number two I'm very surprised. So good job guys. Okay now we are getting into some more official business and we're gonna let you guys know what our top ten junk monk podcast episodes are. So number ten is season six. Episode 13, Mr. Monk and the Three Julies. Hey, it's a good yes. episode. It's a good episode. One word to describe this episode for me is vibes. For real. I get so spooky, spooky vibes. Spooky vibes. I love the, ex- the my, it's why it has my favorite Randy exchange. I wish there were 10 of them. <laughs> like, it's so good. Julie action. To the maximum. Someone's trying to kill Julie Teeger. The gang is all involved in it. And uh-huh. like 
uh, you're trying they're all trying to save julie and then the premise that someone trying to kill julie teagers and then they're like well there must be hundreds of julie teagers and they're like nope just one <laughs> and it's our julie and then everyone's like freaking out randy i need a gun <laughs> nope <laughs> Number nine is season six, episode two, Mr. Monk and the Rapper. Yep. Okay. This is a good one. That is a good one. You got Murder Russ, Silent Killer. I mean, sorry, Killa, Natalie. Killa. 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 Um, Snake, the, Snake the Assassin. Word. Word. Everybody, Every word. word. Under your limo. That's where the surprise is. Under your seat like Oprah giving prizes. <laughs> What is the scene where he goes into the, they go to play the video game and they're playing like. Oh, he's beating him up. Yeah. There's, there's like, there's gangsters and they're beating up this guy because he didn't give him, he didn't give him his word. It's like little speech bubbles. Like you gave me your word. <laughs> like fighting amongst like, oh God. And he's like, what do you want to tell me? And then there's a Snoop quote that I always get wrong, but he's like, he's like, uh, if you quit on me, that puts me in deep dookie mookie, and that's charge for shizzle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is charge for shizzle. <laughs> it is so good. And then, of course, the summation rap, all of it is epic. For yeah, sure. For sure. A lot of... Um... And then, like you guys said, this is that was your number one guest star, so had to make our list as well. Okay, number eight is season eight. Episode four, Mr. Monk is someone else. It's just a strong episode. Yeah, it's so fun. It's... It is a monk adventure done right. Oh, for sure. I feel like Monk goes undercover. He's Frankie De Palma. Hey, this, this, co- what does he say? This coffee tastes like BM? He's like, it's tea. <laughs> He's like, I want warm tea. He's like, you want warm iced tea? oh my gosh it's so funny um he does what else does he do oh one of the best crazy monk moments that i'm surprised that i did not put on the list which was six i repeat six rolled up terry cloth terry cloth towels possibly egyptian cotton chalkboard no chalk i'm ascending stairs now i'm descending the stairs i'm touching the lamp i'm still touching the lamp what is wrong with me? <laughs> can't stop touching the lamp. There's two fruit bowls. One real, one fake. Both contain grapes. <laughs> He's a... What is he? A- Adrian? What does she ask? To, she Lola kisses him and then she says, Who are you? And he's like, Adrian DePaul Monk or something. <laughs> Fradrian? Fradrian DePaul Monk. <laughs> Natalie Teagerb. Mm, I love Natalie Teagerb. Looks like you have a date, Natalie Teager. And then Natalie gets all hot cha cha in her like backless dress. And it's like competing <laughs> with Lola. And then she's like, You're one lucky woman. And she's like, I know. Aww. And it's like, Oh, it's so cute. And then everyone that Monk like uh, intimidates by just like straightening out his tie. And he's like, Okay, sorry, sorry, I asked. Sorry, I asked. <laughs> and he's like, What? Your tie was crooked. He's like, Okay, I'm sorry. So funny, where he's like, Hey, turn this down. And he's like, Dude, this is a club. And he's like, Tell him Frankie Diploma's here. And he's like, Oh my God, sorry, Frankie. Oh my gosh, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> like, everyone, oh my gosh. And then, of course, Adrian, 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 Adrian. It's like, Hey, do you want to be in the obituary section tomorrow? Section D. <laughs> Get out of here. And he like pushes them and then pushes them to the bushes. <laughs> that episode is very good, guys. That is it's a, so solid. That is such a good episode. That is our number eight official Junk Monk episode. What's number seven, Noah? Number seven, season four, episode nine, Mr. Monk in the Secret Santa. Oh, no. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, my diva. And then I think Natalie and... Don't Natalie and um, Monk Carol in this one, too. Yes, they, they go. Do. They go door to door. The secret Santa. Is this when Monk dresses up as Santa? No. I don't think so. 
Yeah, it is the secret Santa because remember the reason that Natalie and Monk go to the house and Carol is because they're looking for a guy who they think poisoned the captain and he's been like missing. So he goes to the wife and the daughter's house and they Carol and then Natalie asks to go to the bathroom while she and she like snoops or something while Monk is talking or vice versa. And then they go to the mall where Monk dresses up as Santa so that he can get the little girl on his lap and start asking her questions about the dad. Oh. Yeah. And then Monk meets the little girl named Trudy. And she's like, <laughs> he just starts crying. She's like, my <laughs> name was Trudy. And he starts crying and she's like, wipes his tears or something like that. Aww. It's like the sweetest little thing. Of course, you have Alice Westergren is the villain, which no one said. Yeah. She tries to kill her boyfriend who won't leave his wife for her. And then she has a really good plan. She sets up the secret Santa and she gives the captain that guy's name so that she can steal the captain's present. Like he's like, oh, I got him something, but I can't find it. And she's like, oh, why don't you give him that bottle of port that came from the, you know, body shop or whatever as a present that she obviously put in poison uh -huh. and he's like oh excellent idea and she's like -ha -ha -ha. <laughs> and then she gives it he gives gifts the bottle drinks it boom which i will say that was actually a good plot hole was how on earth did she know that he would be the only one to drink that like mm -hmm. he could have shared it with somebody stottlemyre could have like been like no i won't drink that or i'll give it to karen or something like she could have killed anybody else that's a really big plot hole. It's really popular to just like share or not even share, just like regift. Yeah, like who drinks alcohol. a whole bottle of wine by themselves? Exactly. I mean, I'm not judging you if you do, listener. I just, <laughs> I'm just at a, at a Christmas party. You open a bottle of wine and you don't offer anybody else that's there. If you don't, then we aren't judging you. <laughs> yeah, that's messed up. I want some. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, yeah, but that's a really good plot. And then of course the clue with the envelope. Mm -hmm. the envelope swap Which and then good. oh and then she gives because she's monk secret santa and so she gives him the dust pan and the oh, little yeah. hand and he's like i love it <laughs> <laughs> it's so good so yeah mr monk and the secret santa is a very solid episode and number six Mr. Monk and the Girl Who Cried Wolf. Oh, it's a good one. Yes. And what's so funny is when we were like discussing this and like doing all this, like I was only going about the plot, honestly. Like I was thinking like, wow, Sharon is crazy that her evil teacher steals her recipe for the fatal recipe and her story. And then this guy and her, and they concoct this entire plan to make Sharona uncredible steal her story and get away with their murder and that is just wow it's amazing and completely forgot about varla yeah i did not think honestly about her at all when we were ranking this and now i'm just like wow it definitely deserves to be up there <laughs> what was that my ass are up here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i'm trying to think of what other stuff she says it's so funny She's like telling him all the rules, like, I'm not gonna, I don't cook, I don't clean, I'm out by five, <laughs> like, all this stuff that's, like, not plausible at all. Um, it's just genius. Like, when you, like, figure out the crime, you're like, wow. Like, it, you're just, like, taken aback. It's just, it's genuinely, like, one of the best crimes out there. It's not, like, the funniest episode, but it's just, like, really creative for sure. Yeah, I've, Sharona plays the crazy so good. And like, I mean, not a diss to Natalie, but like, I, I feel like it's a different episode if it's Natalie. Yeah. And Sharona's Biddy Shram's acting was just like killer. And it's like, um, I don't know. It's like, cause I feel like we've seen Natalie in like a voodoo curse situation where she's like petrified and she is like really scared, like crawling up in a ball where Sharona is like, Sharona's so tough that she's like, yeah, like even I'm super tough and I don't know what the exactly. heck is going on. And like, the, I feel like I am going crazy. Am I crazy? And then she goes to see Dr. Kroger and it's really like gut wrenching. And then even the fact like also that they carried out the mystery for so long. Yeah. And made you go, what is going on with Sharona? And they show you like the scene with the teacher uh -huh. and the dead guys behind her. 
And so Sharona is looking out the window and sees the guy with the what a screwdriver in his head. And she's like, oh my God. And then the girl turns around like horror movie style. And the girl turns around and like looks right at the guy because it's her boyfriend. Uh-huh. And then she turns on Sharona and she's like, what's wrong? And Sharona's like hoping that she saw it. And Sharona's like, nothing. I'm just really tired. Oh, oh my gosh. And it, guys, that episode is freaking killer. That episode is so good. It is so good. Wow. It just makes you in the feels, you know? Yes. It's like Three Julies, but like uh, Three Julies is like fun and spooky. And Cried Wolf is like spooky and uh, like a psychological thriller. Yeah, exactly. Like a mini thriller. Uh-huh. Very good. Very good. Okay, number five. Number five, season six, episode 15, Mr. Monk is on the run, part one. Mm-hmm. You can't not feel like you're on this adventure with Monk and you're running from the police with him. And you're just trying to make it to the next day. I love this. It's just... You're along for the ride. You're just there. Mm-hmm. It's the first two-parter. It's it has so many like if it, if the last one feels like a like a psychological thriller, this is like an action movie. Yes. And it has so many parts to it, and they get to have even more parts because it's split up into two parts. Huh? And then, like when it starts off, it's like remember the the very first scene of this episode is like Monk, we have something important to tell you, and he's like, what? You're scaring me. And he's like, well, we found, you know, this pipe and it has six fingerprints on it. So he's like, holy crap. And then Monk finds the clue, which High Conrad said that was like his favorite clue was the, was it an acronym or something? And it was like something about Avenue, Mar- Marshall Avenue, Marshall Avenue. And so it was like, yes, Marshall Mar- Avenue. Marshall, Mars shall yeah. have a new. Or Marsh. Mars shall heaven, or something. It's heaven. Uh, for some reason, I thought it, the word it said heaven on the board, but yeah, Mars shall yeah, like what yeah. you said. So yeah, so then he makes it there, and then he's confronted with the guy he knows planted the bomb that killed Trudy, and yeah. he's like, "That's you," and he's like, "You did it," and then they start fighting, and then boom. The guy's dead and it looks like Monk shot him and Monk's like, what is happening? And so you don't know whether to believe Monk or not. And then, like you said, and then he's on the run. He's running away. And then at the end, of course, he finally puts it together. And then remember, he puts on Mitch's uniform. Yes. And then Stottlemyre's like, okay, well, let's make up a plan, basically. Which we don't know that. But then they do. And then they go to the dock and Stottlemyre's like, Monk, no. Boom, boom, boom. Kills him and he flies over the uh... thing into the dark water. And it's like, to be continued. Yeah. You're just left on that that hill, on that cliff, where you're just... The cliff. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, the cliffhanger. But I'm... <laughs> so, yeah. That is our number five episode, making our number four episode, season two, episode six, Mr. Monk Goes to the Theater. I, I love theater, and I mean, like, it's just so funny. It's hilarious. The entire thing is just, oh, it's amazing. It has Gail in it. Mm-hmm. It's it's hilarious. Sharona's mom. Sharona's mom, yeah. And then even the, the crime is really interesting as well with the knife. And it was like, no, it was a real knife. Or it was a fake knife. But it, she somehow actually stabbed him. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. It is so good. Yep. What's the most iconic line that you say from it? Did you miss me, cuz? <laughs> Hey, cuz. <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> Hope you don't mind. I let myself in. <laughs> Pulls up on crotch. <laughs> it's so funny. Yes. Mr. Monk Goes to the Theater is definitely a very epic episode. Um, I love... I actually love the villain in this one. I didn't mention the villain in the villain ones. But Jenna Ryan is the villain. And her dad... She's a, kind of a psycho girl. And yeah. then she like, I like the clue where she had her nail appointment two weeks. Like they're booked out two weeks. So that means she booked her nail appointment out because she knew she was going to be starring in the play. Yes. That's and so they're cool. like, huh? So that was a really good one. Okay. Let's move on to number three. three. Number three, season four, episode 16. 
our first season finale, Mr. Monk gets jury duty. Great episode. Another episode that I would say is a like a like a good movie. Um, but it's obviously like shorter. It's not as like cinematic, but like even like the very first scene where Randy and the captain are running after Escobar and Randy's like, we're going, we're downtown. We need backup. The suspect is wearing a purple shirt. What's more like lavender? Randy, nobody cares. <laughs> but this chase scene is really good and they get the guy. And then of course they have, you know, our famous lines, no ID. I brought Cobb oh, salad. I brought Cobb salad. Hot toddy and mustard. mustard. <laughs> There's a body in, in the, the dumpster. dumpster. You want a hot toddy and mustard? I brought Cobb salad. <laughs> it's so good. I love... If you've never seen the movie 12 Angry Men, it is the same premise, basically. And it's a really good movie. I had to watch it in criminal law in college. And um, it's a black and white movie, so I'm not really into that. Mm. But it was a very good movie. And it was all about one guy being the holdout and accusing, you know, exonerating the guy. So, and him, like, it's like a whole, what's it like a bottle episode? But it's a bottle movie where they're like, I'm pretty sure they're in the jury room like the entire time. Whoa. Yeah. And debating and stuff. And so... It's, a, it's, it's pretty much just like this, um, except for it has characters that we know and love. <laughs> yeah. Monk, and then they do all, you know. My mm. favorite thing mm. is when mm. Monk turns it around on them and is like, hey, you said we were a team. We can't work alone. I need your help with this. Just follow my lead. And then she comes back into the room from the restroom. And Monk's like, okay, you're right. We decided that you we're going to go with you. We're changing our vote to guilty. And she's like really oh that's cool and they're like yeah yeah so now you can vote guilty too and we can be done and she's like i don't know guys i just need a minute and they're like what are you up to and she's like boom everybody drop your phone drop everything yeah. you're doing and it's like oh uh, snap and then they like go she finally she ties everybody up and then monk scoots over to the blinds yes. with the knife and fixes the thing fixes the blinds and then um of course, she. The whole plot is for her to be with Escobar. Yeah. And she goes into the, the the shoot, the laundry shoot, and they come yes. out together. And then he's like, "Freeze!" <laughs> Great episode. Very theatrical. Very good plot line and premise. Definitely That's our a ten. number three episode. And number two is season four, episode five. Mister Monk gets drunk. This episode is, I feel like we don't, definitely like we didn't do an episode fully about it, but it's definitely a classically like undeniably a good episode. Yeah, The crime is really good. There's a lot of great clues, like the guy speaking Spanish and then calling it like pop versus a soda. And he's like, well, yesterday his brother called it soda. He called it pop. And like... The aqua velva clue, the fact that everyone completely cut Monk out of like the pictures, out of yes. the memory that and everything. Sick. Natalie doesn't trust him. And he's like, you said it was a two-way street. We're supposed to be trusting each other. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I know. About that. And he's like, yeah, I know. His name's Larry Zweibel. And then she sees the painting that says Larry Zweibel. <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like Monk had everything stacked against him. And then... And then the ironic thing is Monk had one sip of alcohol from Trudy's bottle and then he's drunk. And then, so he goes upstairs and so everyone thinks he was drunk and yeah. that he was crazy and hallucinating or whatever. And then of course you have the kissing fern. Kiss me underneath, underneath the kissing, kissing fern. fern. Baby, Baby the, the hanging, hanging plant. plant. The uh, hanging plant. plant. Yeah. <laughs> bum bum. <laughs> Forgot about Monk doing that. <laughs> <Ba-dum, ba-dum, ba-dum. laughs> and then he's out of the picture. Oh my gosh. That is a great, great episode. And then of course Monk getting drunk. Catch me if you can. <laughs> and the drunk summation. I would like to hear the drunk summation. Oh my god. I would also like to hear the drunk summation. Wait. I know it's long, but... Ladies and gentlemen, it's Leland Shadowmire. Homicide! 
Show, show them your badge. Show, 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 show it. Show it. Show it. Show it. a big old paddy wagon <laughs> they still make paddy wagons <laughs> cappy 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 your, show them your badge <laughs> show them your badge <laughs> show it <laughs> i like the criminals part he's like they're all criminals criminals <laughs> criminals <laughs> <laughs> look at them Look, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> okay, that don't look like it. But... <laughs> and then, a great episode. Yeah. All the stuff that they go through. Beating up the guy's car. And all this just to make it look yes. like... Just to make it look like he was like out of the picture. Brilliant. Brilliant indeed. Okay. That was our number two episode. So that means our number one episode. We got to do a drum roll, Toby. Season 4, Episode 2, Mr. Monk Goes Home Again. Oh, Woo! Ugh. Undeniably one of the greatest episodes. It has Ambrose Monk. What else does it have? It has, like you said earlier for Mr. Monk and the Three Julies, vibes. Mm-hmm. You feel like it's Halloween mm-hmm. night. You feel like you're watching like an old movie that's like... Really good. That's really good. <laughs> Oh like an God. old classic movie. Yeah. Like a Hocus Pocus and everyone's like, oh yeah, let's watch that for Halloween. Like, I will legit like watch Goes Home Again on Halloween. Yes. I That should be our tradition. Yeah. Goes Home Again. I like that. I just... It's a classic. And between the two of us, our number one episode. And that's the thing, too, is that you could take this list, like, I know we've said it before, like, with our season rankings, but, like, you could take this list of our favorites and presumably be like, what episode should I show people? Exactly. You know? Maybe not, like, on the run part one, but, like, gets drunk. You could show jury duty. The girl who cried wolf. No, that one's really good. I would hook someone so Secret Santa. Yeah. A lot of our episodes do have vibes, though. Yes, for sure. Cried Wolf has vibes. Julie's creepy. Home Again is kind of spooky. Yeah. I love that Monk dresses up as the safety patrol officer. <laughs> it's really funny. And then Julie's like, please, Mr. Monk, take me trick or treating. Please, please, please. And then so he dresses up. Of course, Ambrose is waiting for his dad to come home. And he's like, he's not coming. And then he stays home with Natalie. And Natalie gives him a maybe. Aww. Which is so sweet. It's like, do you mind if I like said my told my dad like you might go out with me? Oh, and she's like, sure. It's oh my gosh, and then the entire entire Neptune bar thing is totally genius. Yeah, the guy Paul Gilstrap tried to kill his wife, and then he tried to put other candy bars in circulation so it made it look like an accident, and then I guess what happened? I guess he got regrets or something. He uh-huh. regretted it, and so he tried to go steal them all back. What a great plot. Yeah. And then Ambrose is like, he's so knowledgeable that he's like, no, tetracycline is a, I don't think that's what it is, tetrachloridrine. Tetrachloridrine is a synthetic poison. I'll be dead within five minutes. Oh. And so then he's like, oh, my stomach hurts. And then they ride in the ambulance and they're like, oh. Then you're crying and they're crying. And they're crying. And he's like, and he's like, wait, look at this candy bar. This is from last year. And he's like, that's why it tasted funny. 
that's why it tasted funny. Aww. And they're like, oh, that's why I have a stomach ache. Oh, and then they're crying and laughing. Wow. And then they go back home and there's a note from the dad on the door. Sorry I missed you. Proud of you for getting out of the house, Ambrose. I'm like, oh, What a great episode. Honestly. Fantastic episode. Number one spot. For deserved. sure. Well deserved. Okay. So, here's the moment I feel like you guys have been waiting for. Like, maybe you think this that... This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been waiting for, too. We figured we would do our joint ones because those are the ones we have to kind of, like, compromise and discuss. These are our undeniable, our favorite episode. So if you're wondering, like, what's going on in our little brains, you're about to hear it. Little so Tiny little brains. <laughs> I was wondering, would you be interested in going back and forth, number 10, number 10? That's what I was thinking. Number 9, number 9. Or I could just go first if you'd like. I mean, I think it would be funner to go, what's your number 10? Okay, Instead okay, of, okay. like, you're us right, listing right. our whole list. All right. I feel like you're going to want to go first for number 10. Really? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um... Even number 10 is such an honor, honestly. To be in someone's top 10. Oh, yeah. I actually had um, I had an episode that I I was trying to debate on the two for my number 10 spot. Because I was like, being in the top 10 is a big honor, like you said. I knocked out one, which was Bad Girlfriend. So, oh. Yeah. So that's, I guess, technically my number 11 episode. So my number 10 episode is season one, episode 10, Mr. Monk and the Earthquake. Okay. Yeah. I used to be, my air, airplane used to be my favorite out of season one. This is my new favorite out of season one. I get really excited when this one's about to come up next. Like if I'm about to go to sleep, I'll skip this one, go to Redheaded Stranger and save the earthquake for the next night when I'm awake because I love Sharona getting conned by the Australian guy. And the gibberish thing, it's, it's exciting to me. So, that's my number 10. Okay. My number 10 is season 3, episode 11, Mr. Monk and the Cobra. Oh, my. <laughs> it's a classic. Why? It's, well, I mean, I like the guest star. I'll mm. be honest. So, the guest star does it big for you because you're like, yes. oh, I love The Last yes. Airbender. And I love seeing him. And he's in a really big scene with Monk. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. Fair enough. I could definitely see a guest star giving you good vibes for an episode. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. My number mm. nine is season seven, episode three, Mr. Monk gets Lotto Fever. Okay. This That's is valid. a huge Natalie highlight. And it is so, I love it so much. 32, number 32, 32 teeth. <laughs> number 17, my daughter 17. Hi, Julie. <laughs> and then she's like, I thought that I would like read some of my fan mail on air. And he's like, yeah, we don't really have time for that. And that's not really people are tuning in. And she's like, oh, is that what they're telling you? <laughs> there is so much good stuff about Lotto Fever. I love it. And I know a lot of people don't like it because of how Monk treats Natalie and Natalie treats Monk and all that. And my favorite things are when the assistant and Monk go at it. That's my favorite. Yes. So that is my number nine episode. Okay. My number nine episode is season four, episode 11. Mr. Monk bumps his head. Really? Yes. Wow. Why? Cora, it's, it's. I do. I told you this. I love the ones that they're taking me on an adventure. Mm -hmm. They're taking me around in a place I don't know, a place where it's just me and Monk, and we're trying to get through the day. We're trying to get through the night. Whatever. It's entertaining. It's an adventure. It's fun. Really. Yes. Okay. Wow. All right. Fair enough. Okay. My number eight episode is season six episode. One, Ooh. Mr. Monk and his biggest fan. Ah. Marcy Maven has made the top 10 list. Of course, she is a huge classic. Um, the whole Monk Shrine thing, the clue hugs, the jealousy of Natalie, the, did I keep his brush? And he's like, yeah, that'd be helpful. And she's like, yeah, let me go get it. <laughs> Are you sure the dog was dead when you buried it? 
Am I sure my dog was dead when I buried it? What do you think I am, a nut? <laughs> um. <laughs> she has like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this one in a while. And I think he's a hunk. <laughs> and his name is A. <laughs> Adrian, I said, hey, 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 Adrian, I said, hey, okay, Marcy, why don't you talk about the case now? Like, where'd you get all these names for these episodes? <laughs> like, you're like, ooh, like Mr. Monk and the Three Pies, or ooh, Mr. Monk and the Astronaut. Where'd you get these names? <laughs> Gosh. great episode wow i can't say enough Th- that one is so fun i didn't yes. i was then that was when i was pleasantly surprised by i did not think that i was going to love that episode that much and knocked it out of the park for me sarah silverman absolutely murdered that episode okay my number eight episode is season seven episode 11 i don't know why i've had episode 11 three times in a row seriously yes i didn't know that cobra episode 11 is season four i think Yes, episode 11 of season 4. Season 3. Cobra season of season 3. three. Mm-hmm. Bumps the head, episode 11 of season, season four. 4. Yeah. No, it's episode 12. What episode is it again? Mi- uh, Mr. Monk Goes to the Bank. Oh, okay. Yeah. Number 8. I mean, when we're at the end of it and we're all like stuck in there together and we're all feeling like just trapped and then and they have to use the bracelet to save all of them and... Oh, it's just, even the crime is killer with everyone having to, like, work together. I don't, I don't know. I feel like I'm one of the gang mm-hmm. when watching this, and I feel like I'm stuck in there with them. And they use the clever silver guy outside the bank. It's just, it's just genius, really. Silver bastard. <laughs> I know you're out there, you silver bastard. <laughs> That's so good. That is that is a very good episode. That's a very solid episode. Yeah. I will agree. Okay, my number seven episode is season eight, episode two, Mr. Monk and the Foreign Man. You guys know how I feel about this one. Uh, it's my mom's favorite episode. I love it. Uh, two Bags a Day, Natalie <laughs> Teeger, You've Taught Me How to Laugh Again. The coffee joke he just dies about and she tries to show him, you know, this is like Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor. And he's like, none of these guys are as funny as Natalie Teeger. And Monk <laughs> says, you know, no one has a better friend than Samuel Wangaye. No one has a better friend than Adrian Monk. And he calls him Adrian Monk the whole time. Aww. And the uh, everything's American style. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's American style. Quit saying that. And... Um, of course, my absolute favorite thing is the entire washroom scene, the pre-wash cleansing cycle, <laughs> and then all of his whites, off whites, off off whites, his red, his white, his blue, his indigo, his left socks, his right socks, and then he's like, "I've seen the Friends on the TV. That's not how they do it. The Friends. I don't. I don't understand. Lisa Kudrow, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> this is not how they do it. I'm like, yeah, we don't get the African TV here." <laughs> Oh, TV. That's the best. That's my favorite joke. That's my favorite joke. Oh my gosh. Okay. That is my number seven episode, Mr. Muck and the Foreign Man. Okay. My number seven episode is season one, episode six, Mr. Monk in the Billionaire Mugger. Ooh. Fancy. It's so interesting. The crime is just... Yeah. I'm taken aback every time I watch this episode and I... I Because I always... I'm so forgetful, and I always, always forget, like, a little part of the crime every single time, no matter if it's my number one. Mm-hmm. I always forget something, and watching it back and watching it and, like, I don't know, you're just so confused and in the dark, and you're like, why would this billionaire do this? Mm-hmm. But it's not too hard, because you can figure it out with Monk and, w- and with Sharona. It's, it's mm-hmm. amazing. It's such a good episode. Yep. And of course, Frady Cop is in that one. Frady Cop, but yes. It's like the best whenever he, Stottlemyre doesn't realize it's Frady Cop. And then he's like, and this guy right here, he's here. He, uh, and Monk is like advertising for him. Like, don't forget, he's playing in Fiddler on the Roof and the amphitheater next to Tuesday or something. And Stottlemyre like turns behind him and is like, oh my gosh, like you're a Frady Cop? Like totally feels duped. It's funny. <laughs> so... 
That was a good one, though. Okay. My number six episode is season four, episode two, Mr. Monk Goes Home Again, which we just discussed. Um, it is one of the two episodes where we see Ambrose, John Turturro, who's my favorite guest star of all time on Monk, and he does it brilliantly. Like we said, all the Halloween vibes and everything, and I love the mystery in this one mixed with Ambrose being in it and those family dynamics, and I also love that this is the second time we see him, so we don't have to go through like the formality of introducing him. They just kind of get into an adventure together. And that makes for a really good episode. So, um, yeah, Mr. Monk Goes Home Again. It's October, so I'm going to be watching that one soon. <laughs> That's your number six? Mm-hmm. Okay. My number six is season eight, episode four, Mr. Monk is someone else. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. It's... There is, of course, the plot hole, but, I mean, the episode is just so great and funny and just adventurous. It's something you want to see Monk in that it doesn't even, the plot hole doesn't even compare to anything else in the story. The story. Yeah, I would never put it past that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's brilliant. I love Mr. Monk and someone else. Yeah. That's definitely a fun adventure that you go on with him and he's by himself and meeting Lola and... Yeah, all, everybody, Harold and mobsters and all of this stuff. So I could yeah. see how, why you like that one so much. Okay, number five for moi. Season two, episode 15, Mr. Monk Gets Married. This is another one that I get very excited about watching. Um, kind of like the earthquake where I'm like, ooh, I want to focus on this one whenever I see it. I love the gold story i love every like little shenanigan that goes on between monk and sharona she's like they're on a picnic and she's like you have to sit on the ground it's a bonding exercise and he's like no can't sit on the ground she's like you're gonna look like a crazy person you can't just squat at a picnic and then she's like just sit on the bench And he's like i saw a bird there earlier she's like oh my gosh and then of course the kiss the kiss is the most awkward intense thing they're just like straining their necks trying not to kiss each other and then monk is like and gurgles and she's like okay that's just offensive <laughs> it's so funny and of course they're helping randy out with his mom which is amazing and yeah gets married is such a fun one yes i, that, I, I yeah yeah it's such a fun episode Ugh. okay my number five episode Season four, episode five, Mr. Monk gets drunk. Okay. I mean, what's not to love about this episode? Like, it's it really does hold a special place in my heart because I I just remember this being like one of my first ever monk episodes. Yeah, I think so, yeah. And it just oh, it's so funny. It was like the first like funny episode we did. Like we didn't have a lot of funniness and Mr. Monk and Mrs. Monk, which is what we started off with. Mm-hmm. Mr. Monk goes to a wedding. Mr. And Mr. Monk and Little Monk. Mr. Monk and the Secret Santa goes to a fashion show. Like, none of those were, like, really funny. Mm-hmm. And that was the first really, really funny one we saw. Mm-hmm. I will never, ever forget that. I love Mr. Monk Gets Drunk. Yeah. That's so funny, because I, like, I mean, I don't want to spoil, but that didn't make my list. I just... It's it's one of those where like I said it's to me it's objectively very strong. Yeah. It's very funny, very good. The crime is fantastic and the summation of course like we said is fantastic and it's just not it's not one that gives me personal vibes, but man is it a strong episode. Yes. I really enjoy that one. So my number 4 episode, season 3, episode 6, Mr. Monk and the girl who cried wolf. Again, we talked about this one, the spooky vibes. I love Biddy Shram in this one. Biddy Shram is a golden star. This, to me, is like, if you could, like, revenge act in reverse, like, oh, you're going to get rid of me? I'll show you what I can do. <laughs> That's what Biddy Shram did in that episode. And I can't believe they let her go after seeing what she could do in that. Because I, I just can't imagine, like, after seeing that, thinking what other adventures Sharona Fleming could get into. Yeah. I love that one. Of course, I love Varla to the moon, but I mean, Sharona in that one, like I said, I didn't even think about Varla. Varla just adds to it. She's like a ginormous 
cherry on top. Yeah. That episode just standalone was fantastic. If Monk didn't have an extra assistant in that one, it's that episode still would have been brilliant. The fatal recipe. And Nisi Nash even finds the clue. She's like, I know where you have a copy of that in your own handwriting. And your mm-hmm. scrap paper and your packing paper. Like, poof, amazing. Oh my god. Great episode, yeah. Fantastic. My my number four episode. Season three? No, season two, episode two. Mr. Monk goes to Mexico. This episode is just so like. It's not even, I was going to say average, but it's not average. It's like, it's just so solid. It's so strong. It's so, there's a little bit of everything in it. I just love this episode. El Capitan and (laughs) And Lieutenant (laughs) Lieutenant, (laughs) Lieutenant Plato. And we've we've talked about how they're wearing the same clothes, right? I think so, I've never fact-checked it, but a few people... (laughs) Have said, like, yeah, they're wearing the same thing. I was like, what? How did I not notice that? It's hilarious. I and, and the crime is what gets me every time. How did this person drown while falling from the air? They drowned somehow in the air, but we don't know how. Well, the opening sequence is major, too. Remember, he falls out of the airplane. Yes. And they're like, open your chute. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. And he's like, Pfft. Exactly. And you're like, oh. That did not just And then happen. he's like, this, this child, he drowned. In midair. Yeah. And then what was the other crime he did was a lion. He had a lion attack somebody. Yeah. And he tried to draw Monk and it didn't work. And so he did it again. And he killed the boy. He killed the person that was attacked by the lion. And then he also killed the guy who was dressed like Monk walking around who had stolen his clothes. Yeah. So, yeah. That is a really good crime. And Monk, like, sees someone's been in his room by the crooked painting on the wall. There's a bomb behind it. Uh Uh-huh. It is crazy. And of course, the Sierra Springs thing. Yeah. You can't drink anything but Sierra Springs. So, yep. That is a really good episode as well. Okay. My number three episode is season five, episode 10, Mr. Monk is at your service. Oh, I knew you were going to do that. Talk about a personal one for me. This is the first Monk episode that I ever saw. It was something that bonded my new family, my step family and my family together. We started watching Monk. That's who introduced me to Monk. So I have to put that, of course, at the top of my list because it's amazing. And then, of course, Darn Spider League, Fast Sweetie (laughs) Road. I have have to do it. Uh, Sean Astin was great. Pregnant Natalie Scheme, the frogs in the background. The fact that Paul Buchanan plotted all of that and killed his uh, stepmom so she would die before his dad. And then the Monk way... And Monk, he's like, we're going to do it the Monk way. And they're like, who's Monk? He's like, uh, (laughs) how the monks used to do it. And everything has to be down to the centimeter. And even like Buchanan gets annoyed with him because he's like adjusting his tie, adjusting his tie. (laughs) Just one moment, sir. Just, okay, one moment. He's like, okay, fine. Just lose the tie. (laughs) Like he gets annoyed with him, but everything is the Monk way. Because what's his fake name? Adrian Mandeville? No, that's Jenny Mandeville. I think it's Mulville. I think that's what he says his name is. Because he makes it up on the spot, I guess. But anyway, so I absolutely love that episode. Mr. Monk is at your service. Also, Monk looks great in the, like, tuxedo. Yeah. Like, the butler's tuxedo the whole episode. And he's, like, picking up the glass and, like, nope. Like, there's a tiny little speck on it. And he, like, drops the glass (laughs) in the trash can and stuff. He even sees the blood on the ground from the dead butler. And he's, like, clean it up. (laughs) Okay, my number three episode is season six, episode nine. Mr. Monk is up all night. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Fever dream, you're on an adventure, you're with Monk, you're literally just hanging out with Monk walking around the city. The amount of love I have for this episode. It is amazing. I just, I knew from the moment I watched that episode that I was like, I either really like this or I don't like this at all. And I really, 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 really like this episode. What about Trudy's eyes? Trudy's eyes sealed the deal for me. It was, ugh, heartbreaking, emotional. It was everything I needed. Oh my God. Yep. Well, I know a lot of people will agree with you. I'm not one of them, 
But we we both have our controversial number three episodes. We do, we do. Because you don't like mine, I don't like yours. So I feel like my number two and my number one are pretty renowned. Standard? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going with number two, season eight, episode ten, Mr. Monk and Sharona. Oh. Yeah. An interesting pick, I feel like, but I couldn't deny the nostalgia that Sharona Brings. brought back yeah and so it was like i'm like well i mean the only reason that i love this episode so much is because obviously sharona was here to start with so like it's definitely not like my can't be my favorite episode but it is so like i have honored her on the rest of my list like yeah. earthquake and uh cried wolf that it's like and, and even gets married too yeah these are my favorite sharona episodes and when she comes back, it's just like, yes, yeah. icing, icing on the cake. Because sure. she didn't have to come back, guys. She did not have to come back. And she, Biddy Shram did. That made the whole storyline for Randy and her and closure and everything. It's just amazing. And, you know, as Monk says, you still got it. <laughs> All right. My number two episode, season four, episode 16. Say it with me now. Mr. Mr. Monk, Monk gets, gets jury, jury duty. duty. I mm. have loved this episode since I watched it. I, My undying love for this episode is just... Mm, 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 mm. I, just the action. The, the all around just like... I am glued to the screen every time I watch this. I am pulled into the jury table whatever and i actually want to watch that movie you're talking about what is it called the 12 12 12 angry men 12 angry men there's something about being stuck in that room being just like the underdog the underdog yes nobody believing monk monk having to prove himself oh beautiful beautiful episode hilarious action-packed brilliant i thought that was gonna be your number one so i can't wait to see okay Guys, this is without a doubt. This I will say that my least favorite episode, The Cobra, did change because it's no longer my least favorite. This has been my number one episode since day number one before this podcast was birthed. Oh. And that is season two, episode six, Mr. Monk Goes to the Theater. Oh! This is my absolute favorite. I can, like... Not dissect it, but like it's so the first scene is the real play, like how it was meant to be seen. Okay. Then Monk remembered it all. So he starts performing it like for Sharona so that they can figure out the clues and like, okay, what happened? And then so he starts doing it. He does it really well. Yeah. And he's like, hey, cuz, did Did you you miss me? me? Hope you don't mind. Uh, let myself in <laughs> and like grabs a crotch. <laughs> and Jerome was like, wow, you're really good. And he's like, I have my moments. <laughs> and your husband's downtown drowning himself in scotch and soda. And then he was like directing uh-uh. Sharona. Oh, he, he like touches Sharona and he like pushes her shirt off. And she's <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> I think, and I think then the director walks up and he's like, oh, you're brilliant. And he's like, how did you even see it? And he's like, well, I saw it last night. And he's like, you remembered every line. That's amazing. So then cut to the rehearsal right so you have the real version he memorized it and recites it then you have rehearsal where jenna ryan shows up and is like oh you because she met him at the speed dating thing (laughs) and she's and she went at the speed dating she's like oh my god you and then he's like he starts acting with her and then he can't find like the same magic and then he starts rushing and all of this and he's like okay he's doing a pretty good job and then he gets to the table and he can't bring himself to flip over the table. And the guy's like, no, just toss it. You're an animal. Just throw the table. How about, how about this? How about my character? He puts groceries away, you know, roughly. <laughs> and he's like, no, just throw the table down. And then so he's like all fake mad. And he's like, picks up the bowl, sets it down like gently, but like roughly. And then he like turns the table over like slowly and then he's like who ordered the toss salad 
<laughs> he's like, what the hell is that? And he's like, try a real laugh. And he's like, oh, I don't laugh. And then so him and like Jenna Ryan are talking in the foreground and Monk is just in the back room like, <laughs> and then he's like slapping the table like <laughs> he's trying to real laugh it is so funny and then of course on show night <laughs> there's hundreds of people it's sold out show and he's like because <laughs> Did you miss me? <laughs> oh, I don't mind. I love myself in it. <laughs> he throws the apple up in the air to himself and it drops on the ground. <laughs> Next to him, Al getting a side stitch. <laughs> oh my god. And then, and then he's like, he's like, oh. my favorite, I think, is he walks over to Jenna Ryan and he picks up her purse and then, oh no, it's so, so, so he goes, Cause he's been whispering, right? And then so he's like, "Your husband's downtown, drowning himself in scotch and soda." <laughs> and then he starts putting a man can't count on supposed to be the way he used to. And then, it, cause it, is that the right way to say it? Cause I always get confused. Man can't count on used to be the way he's supposed to, yeah, or something. And he's like, "Man, man can't count on supposed to be." way he used to that's the correct yeah. way to say it so he says man can't count on supposed to be the way he's supposed to or something and then he's like waddling like he's trying to strut and he's like waddling to the table and then he like flips the table over and he's like who ordered a tall salad <laughs> <laughs> It's so bad. And then Jenna Ryan's like about to stab him, I guess. And then he picks up and she's like, oh, I'll call my husband or something. And he picks up the person like, you'll do nothing. <laughs> we quote that so much. It is. Isn't that so? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that's my rendition of Mr. Monk Goes to the Theater. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Good thank you. Good night. That is my absolute favorite episode. There is so much content. That is literally like four different scenes that you're like, oh, I'm watching a performance. Yes. I'm watching a performance. I'm watching a performance. I'm watching a performance. And then Sharona's like, Monk, look out. And then she runs out there and she starts fighting with Jenna Ryan and pushes her against the thing and the whole thing falls down. Yes. And then she's like, oh my God, I never. And she's like, shut up, witch. Show's over. And then, <laughs> and then Sharona's mom's like, my daughter, the detective. <laughs> and starts clapping. Because she also told her mom that all of these lies, that yes. she was the their partners and not an assistant. And, oh, also you pay me this. Oh, and you also have dental. Oh, and Benji made the honor roll. Oh, and also dating this guy who's, he's out of town right now, though. So, <laughs> like, it's, and, and Monk's like, wow, congratulations. <laughs> the lies. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. That is that is my number one episode. As you could not tell, I get so passionate about that one. It is by far my favorite episode. I love it so much. I believe it's Toby's favorite, too. Yeah. So, what's your number one, Noah? I mean, if it has been on my top ten so far, it has to be number one. Season four, episode two, Mr. Monk Goes Home Again. Wow. I mean... That's interesting. Is, I always thought it would be jury duty. I always thought it would be jury duty too, but I mean, I I'm getting excited for Halloween and <laughs> the the fall yeah. is in the air right now. I cannot wait for literally I want my night to be exactly like <laughs> this. One of my friends is dying or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, but he doesn't die. <laughs> he doesn't die at the end. Did you guys even watch it? Jeez. Um it's a Halloween murder mystery. What's not to love about it? Like it's it's high stakes, but at the same time, you're just trick-or-treating with the gang. It's Ambrose. It's Neptune bars. It's Halloween. It's just fun, and it's... You know what? It's high stakes, and they don't know it. Exactly. Exactly. It, I mean, the the drugs and the, the candy bar, but it turns out he ate the one from last year, and... Oh, it's just... It's just amazing. And Ambrose gets out of the house. And, ugh. It's amazing. That is awesome. Okay, guys. 
So I'm going to quickly say mine. Um, so number 10, Earthquake, then Lotto Fever. Biggest fan, Foreign Man. Home Again, Gets Married, Girl Who Cried Wolf, At Your Service, Sharona, and Goes to the Theater. Okay. Um, Cobra, Bumps His Head, Goes to the Bank, Secret Santa, Is Someone Else, Gets Drunk, Goes to Mexico, Is Up All Night, Gets Jury Duty, Goes Home Again. Wow. <clears throat> That's a good set of episodes we have there. I would literally watch all 20 of those right now. Yeah, that was... That's a great list. I wonder what who who do you think's list is better, guys? Out of mine. Let 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 us know. No one likes at your service, so no one likes Sorry. uh Cobra. Maybe. That's kind of true. We'll see. Let us know, guys. Who's whose list did you agree with more? It's not like a who did it better, really. It's just which episodes on the list did you like more? It's not it's not gonna hurt my feelings if you choose. No, okay. <laughs> so okay guys. So we are going to wrap up, um, rate this series with some monk season rankings. So mm. let's look. Oh my gosh, Noah, I have to show you this email that I got. Now that we've kind of talked about our faves, faves, this is from Lorena. She sent this really long email that I can read to you later, but she sent top 10 so she's a teacher oh okay so she made a very monk monk episode grade book no she did not look at this grade book guys they there's literally different columns episode rank overall so she ranked all the episodes episode rank within its own season oh. the episode name number the score she gave it like from one to a hundred Holy crap. They're, it's grade and like it's letter grade, A plus, B minus. This goes a D minus. Oh my God. How much it's weighted. So like the candidate is weighted more because it's the pilot, I guess. Oh. Total scores weighted. Total possible points weighted. Like look at all of this stuff. I don't stuff. know what this means. <gasps> That's crazy. Is this not crazy cool though? Like how much time did that take? That is like amazing. I want to... Oh my god, it keeps going. Oh my god. Well, there's 125 episodes, so... What's the yeah. lowest ranked one? Let's look for oh D's. Oh gosh. D plus buys a house. I can see that. 68. That looks like it might be it. There, it goes to Mexico is a D, I think. Mexico oh, is yeah. a D minus. D minus. That's the lowest one on our list. Is it? Mm-hmm, it is. Wow. Interesting. Wow. That was on... Wasn't that on your top that 10 list? That was in my top 10. Wow, that is wild. Wow. It's number four. So I think she said in her email what her favorite was. Let's give her that little shout out for sending us this amazing Thank email. Thank you so much, Lorena. Thank you, Lorena. Um, let's see. She also said her season rankings. That's what made me think of it. Well, Mr. Muck in the end part one, just so that you guys know, we didn't omit that one. Like we omitted it on purpose. Like we just thought it would be kind of boring to be like, oh, Mr. Muck goes in the end is our favorite. It's like... But if you had to sit down and watch an episode, you're not going to watch the end. Exactly. So that's kind of what we were basing off of. Number two, she said Mr. Mug's on the run. Then let's go. Her number three is Three Pies. So That's pretty good. That's her first, like, normal episode. Yeah. So she, likes gets fired. The kid bumps his head up all night. The Cobra. Yes. Her Cobra's number eight. Employee of the Month, number nine. And Badge, number ten. Wow. She said she hated the badge her first time through. Same girl. Yes. <laughs> My first exactly. and only time through. Never but yes, this again. epic grade book. So cool, you guys. Um, maybe I will get her permission to like post that somewhere. Because I'm sure you guys are interested. That it's, would be cool. It is a very long document, but it's very interesting to go through. So, all right. So let's get to it. Our season rankings. Now, we haven't pre- pre-done this we have not pre-determined this i guess would be the phrase so me and noah are just gonna go through and we're gonna look and see uh we're gonna discuss what are what we think is the worst seasons the best seasons of monk let me get my pen do you have your episode list i do so our least favorite season i think we kind of discussed this a little bit was five and seven yes we were did. the weakest ones yeah so looking it over what do you think is the weakest? I'm thinking season five. I'm not going to lie. 
goes to the hospital, really, really dead guy, visits a farm, leper meets his dad, rock concert, new shrink, class reunion. Private Eye. And then season seven, though, we have buys a house, takes a punch, underwater, falls in love, other brother, which you actually liked. You liked Lady Next Door, too. I didn't. The playoffs, the bully. I think season five is worse. Okay. I think. I could see that. So number eight, season five? Number eight is season five. And then so number seven, seven is season, season seven. seven. Okay. Okay. And then so let's see. The next worst one. Number six. I'm thinking season two. Whoa. Or I was thinking if anything, season one. Okay. Yeah. That was my next one. Just right off the bat. Like not saying we dislike these guys. We're just saying it for our sake the candidate like just not memorable mess necessarily yeah. candidate dale the whale carnival other woman redheaded stranger maybe like that seems kind of low on the list yeah you think or no i agree season, season one and then season two see but i don't or know season eight I'm thinking season eight. That's also really, really bad. Because season eight, like, you don't like favorite show. We don't like UFO. Um, takes the stand. Happy birthday, Mr. Monk. And again, guys, I'm saying this all loosely. Like, we don't like it. Yeah. We're just saying it's contributing to our bottom. Camping. The badge. I'm thinking season eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then now we have season two, three, four, and six left. I think I think season two is the next one to go. My only thing is the the Natalie episodes in the bottom of season three are really weak. Oh, yeah. The election goes to Vegas, stuck in traffic, cabin fever, Cobra. I know you like Cobra, but like right. the, even those four block is not great. And then season three at the top takes Manhattan, maybe the panic room. Those are all pretty bad. Or, uh, just more forgettable episodes. Like, yeah. So. I, we can go season three. But the next hat definitely has to be season two. Yeah. Yeah. And so. then it's between season six and four. Okay. So. I'm going to go. I don't know if this actually works. But to go like side by side. For like episodes. Like other detective versus biggest fan. Biggest fan's better. So I'm going to count over here. Um, goes home, home again, again versus rapper. rapper. Goes home. home again. Um, stays in bed versus naked men. Stays, stays in, in bed. bed. Office. Bad girlfriend. Bad, bad girlfriend. girlfriend. Gets drunk. Birds and bees. Gets, gets drunk. drunk. Mrs. Monk. Berry treasure. Berry treasure. Oh. I think. I think they're both really bad. I think quality wise, Mrs. Monk is better. I think objective quality of storyline and stuff. Berry treasure is really boring. I cannot agree with that. I'm sorry. What? Oh I cannot God. agree with that. Okay, then I won't count it. Goes to a wedding, daredevil. Wedding. Daredevil. What? Really? You didn't like uh, Natalie and Randy going to the wedding? Over that was kind of cute. Monk being suicidal? <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, goes to a wedding. Little Monk versus Wrong Man. Little, Little Monk. Monk. Uh, Secret Santa versus Up All Night. Up All Night. Come on, Candace. I mean, I obviously like Secret Santa better. It's also on the top of our list. But <sighs> maybe objectively... I'll put it on season six, okay? Goes to a fashion show or the man who shot Santa Claus? I think goes to a fashion show. <laughs> okay. I do not like I do not like shot Santa Claus. Okay. Bubs his header joins a cult. Cult. I can see that. Cult, yeah, sure. Um, Captain's marriage and goes to the bank. Goes to the bank. bank. Big reward of the three Julies. Three Julies. Astronaut or paints his masterpiece? Astronaut. Okay, astronaut. Goes to the dentist or is on the run. Part one. On part, the run. On the run. Jury duty or part two. Jury duty. Jury duty, yeah. What's the score? Um, it is eight to eight to seven. So I was thinking season four is better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So season four is number one and season two is number or season six is number two. Okay. Hey. So yeah, so our list is the worst monk the worst season of monk is season eight. Eight. Season five. So, season five. <laughs> the worst? Okay. 
the worst episode no <laughs> thank it okay you got what i was saying let's move on the worst season of monk is season five yes number seven <laughs> this is hard <laughs> number seven on the list there's eight people there's eight there's, there's eight, eight seasons. episodes eight seasons eight seasons <laughs> So number eight is season five. Number seven is season seven. Number six is season one. Number five is season eight. Number four is season three. Number three is season two. Number two <laughs> is season six. That has to be the most confusing segment. We've ever done. Number one is season four. I'm so glad you stuck around for this, guys. This, this is the very last season. season. Number three, number two, number three. <laughs> this is not go as planned. Okay. <laughs> number two is season six and the best season of Monk, according to us, is season four. Objectively. That's not according to us. Season four has always been the best season of Monk. Yes, objectively. I am really happy with this list. I'll be honest. I am too. This it, reflects my favorite episodes like pretty well. It doesn't. I don't think it reflects my personal ones. Okay, let's let's compare. I don't have a single one in season in our last season that we rated. So season five, which is number eight on the list, I have nothing from that, and I have nothing from. So you have no season eights. Yeah. You have no season fives? I have no season fives, I have no season eights, and I have no season sevens. And those are all pretty low on the list. Interesting. Okay. I only have one from season one. I have, I believe I have one from each season. At least. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Earthquake season one. I have a couple from season two. I have a season three, a season four, a season five. At your service from season five. Season six, season seven was Lotto Fever. And season, and season eight. eight was Foreign Man and Sharona. Wow. Yeah, diverse. so mine's pretty pretty well spread out. Okay, so let's compare them to you guys. You guys voted on the worst season of Monk. So you guys said also season five. So this is out of, let's get some more numbers, guys. Let's make it more confusing, okay? Mm-hmm. So out of 100%, so 5% of people said <laughs> season five. Six percent of people. This is amazing. Oh, this, is so <laughs> this is so stupid. Okay, wait. Can we not just do like the biggest one? The the worst rated season. Okay, the worst rated season, season five. Season three. Wait, what? Oh, y'all you you did it best season or worst season. <laughs> yeah, this is only five percent <laughs> only five only five percent of people said season five guys. And then six percent of people, <laughs> people season seven and then eight percent of people said season two <laughs> also eight percent of people said season eight <laughs> this is the most confusing this is the most confusing thing i've ever done i'm gonna turn this off 20 minutes ago season 11 i mean <laughs> season six 11 percent yeah but in season one had 15 <laughs> percent and season four had also 15 percent Okay, y'all's favorite season. Seriously, I'm trying to stop laughing. Okay, y'all's favorite season of Monk was season three, which I would assume that is because the Natalie and Sharona. That like that's pretty much the only mi- mixture on that because that was a pretty big like definitive. I do not like season three. Very y'all's much. most favorite was season three, and then season five was your all's least favorite. So, in case y'all were thoroughly confused by now. <laughs> Let's why, hear my personal why rankings. Why do you have to do percentages? Are you kidding me? <laughs> because that's how they on Facebook. That's how the poll does it. Why didn't you just rank, put them? I, I just. It doesn't matter either way. It would have been super confusing either way. It would have. Okay, my personal rankings are five and seven. Are the bottom also. But then number three. Then season eight. Then season one. Then season six. Then season four. And my favorite season two. So... As, as long as you guys How are your favorite can, season two <laughs> as long as you guys can just remember all the seasons of which episodes heard which season <laughs> this is golden we need to just post it like, I'll, 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 po- I'll post it i took enough notes to post my entire life okay um <laughs> but yeah so my least favorite season was season five and my most favorite season was season two okay so my yeah that's accurate my favorite season was season four my least favorite season was season eight, I think. 
or season five. Actually, no. I think my my favorite one was season four. My least favorite was season five. Monk really switched up right there. Season four was golden. Yeah, that's true. Yep, it had a, it does it has a bunch. Um, but see, season two for me has the circus, has Mexico, has theater. I like the Playboy episode. I love the Paperboy episode. I love the Three Pies. I like the TV star. I love Gets Married. Like it's really strong for me. So I'm going season dos. Okay, guys, that was um, a little anticlimactic. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so we're going to move on to our final thoughts, which is usually when we ramble. But hey, I have stuff to say. Oh, I have some stuff to say. Okay, because we wanted. I wanted to acknowledge like some of like, of course, you guys like some of our highlights on the show. How many like viewers and stuff? I mean, not to like toot our own horns or anything, but just you know, it's a big deal. We've had you know a hundred plus episodes that we've published, and so. I just thought, you know, we could go over some little stats. So we have 24,000 streams according to our podcast hosting site. That's impressive. Yeah. Okay. Um. YouTube, we have 35,000 views. Wow. So that's like, right. So we have more views on YouTube than we do on our like actual podcast. Yeah. So thanks YouTube. 1700 hours of watch time. Wow. And we only have 282 subscribers. That's like, crazy. I feel like that's a lot. You guys are loyal. Um, do you want to tell them our social? Our social, we have 626 Instagram followers, 612 Facebook junk monkers, and 178 Twitter followers. That's impressive that's for nobody using insane. Twitter. insane, <laughs> yeah. Nobody that I know using Twitter, <clears throat> except for myself. Um, and guys, our audience reach, our podcasting, like the hosting site has a really cool, um, like... Uh, what's it called like statistics page where you can see how worldwide we are which mm-hmm. i was like what we're across six continents there's Whoa. only seven and the seventh one is antarctica exactly hi antarctica hi antarctica. where are you at <laughs> <laughs> so we had 54 different countries so wow um to name a few usa woo canada Mexico, Australia, Greece, Switzerland, Spain, Sri Lanka, Japan, Brazil, Ireland, UK, France, Philippines, India, Germany, Austria, South Korea, Moldova, Ghana, Zambia, Cameroon. Just to name a few. Some of them wow. got obscure and I had to copy and paste them to see what those Cameroon. places w- were. They're like they were cuz like they were in their language. <clears throat> I was like, "What are these?" That's crazy. So you guys are viewing our page listening downloading all the things so we appreciate the worldwide love you guys that is amazing there was literally we had just named like what maybe 20 countries that means there's like 34 more countries we didn't say that is wild um and we've had on our instagram alone on our page alone on our podcast alone we've had sarah silverman shoot us a like we've had tim bagley Wow. show us some love also the actual tim i don't know the actor's name but real tim um julie's boyfriend <gasps> no way yep um that is so cool sharon lawrence she actually listened to our podcast episode and shared our like post where it had like her graphic on it and said like rate this episode she shared it and told people to go listen i was like that's amazing Howie Mandel gave us a like. Of course, I've reached out to Josie Adams before, and she's responded to me, which was really sweet of her. Aw. Kate Rashad. Of course, yes. Benji. Our first interviews. Our first, yeah. Like, our first interviews, like, we thought, like, that, we thought, we that, thought was that was it. all we were going to get. Like, and not that that's... We, we were on cloud nine. I know. We were, like, amazing. the actual Kane Rashad and I, Emmy Clark. I can't believe Emmy Clark made a video for me. I'm so She happy. made a video for you. She was like, what's up, Noah? Oh my God. She made it just for me. I'm so happy. That is amazing. And of course, she showed our video to Trailer Howard, who oh, said yes. we were adorable. Aww. So Trailer Thank Howard, you. we are in her universe as well. Uh-huh. Hi, Conrad, which had an amazing interview with. That was our first big interview. Yes. Like face-to-face. We were on we Zoom were call. We were so nervous. We were so nervous. We asked him like such great questions and he had such a great memory. I was very impressed. Mm-hmm. It makes sense because he, you know, he wrote it and everything. But like, man, that was that was a lot of fun. He was a really fun guest too. Yes, he was he a really, really nice was. guy. 
Of course. JGS. J- we just call him JJ at this point. <laughs> Jason Gray Stanford. Jay Money. Money. Jason Gray Stanford. Can you believe we interviewed him? I mean, like, we were talking like for an hour. We were like, hey, he was like, hey. We were like, hey. We're like, sup, Randy. He was like, what's up? We rapped with him. We rapped with him. We're like under the seat, like Oprah Oprah giving giving prizes. prizes. We literally rapped with him. It was crazy. It was crazy cool. (laughs) And what the coolest part is, honestly, is that you guys were there with us. Because who would we be even telling this to? Like, we'd be like, hey, friends, we we interviewed Jason Gray Stanford. And they're like, Jason, who, what? And we're like, well, we think it's cool. Like, no, exactly. you guys think it's cool. You You're guys are only have... friends. <laughs> well, talk about I mean, but kind of, sure. <laughs> sure, if you want it. Um, no, we've had listeners. We had OG listeners like Scrunchy Gal. Um, Luke Seacrest. Fabi. Joel. Linda. Keaton. Denise. Fantasia. Lisa. Of course, Lindsay. Lindsay, yes. All of your fantastic gifts, art, love, support, messages, everything. And um, so thankful. Yeah, so thankful, so blessed. Um blessed. What are what are what are your favorite junk monk episodes and highlights? What do you remember? Like what are like memories that you have? Just off the top of your head. There was just so much. So many nuns gonna nun. Just little inside jokes we had. Yes, references. That's like the best. I loved junk time. I know like it was your favorite time of the show. But like thinking back of how much. Like when we started that segment where we started talking about ourselves. We started learning about each other. Yeah. And that was really cool. Like learning how you got the scars on your forehead and stuff. Like I didn't know that. Like... You know, just Mm -hmm. things that I didn't know about you and you didn't know about me. And like you said, inside jokes and just things we say now Uh nobody gets. It's just like awesome. Um, Of course, you know, like Julie Action is our favorite. But some of like the best like episodes, like Julie Action, like Birds and the Bees, like episodes we didn't necessarily like they're not on our top favorites, but like they're on our Junk Monk favorites, like in our hearts. Like we talked forever about great episodes, Tim and Clay and like... Oh my gosh, like, we had so much fun with that. Our film noir, we're like, podcast <laughs> noir. Like, we were such dorks, and it was so much fun. We were the biggest dorks. Just, I don't even remember that. What was I rapping? You rapped the intro for... Oh my god, yes. I Would I rap the intro for Mr. Monk and the Rapper? <laughs> oh my god, I need to go back and listen to that. That is so funny. Howdy ho, you handsome hunk. For some reason, have a snack and gain some chunk. If your day is great or really sunk, we hope to help, help you shake the, the funk. funk. So if you're good, good to hear some drunk, drunk, buckle up. It's a Junk Monk Podcast. podcast. Dun, dun, dun. But it was like rap Yeah, but it was rap, yeah. It's, for some reason, it's like the default on my... I phone so like every time i finished proofing an episode that's what pops up what episode is that 602 oh my god i'm so excited to listen to this howdy ho you handsome hunk grab a snack and gain some trunk if your day is great or really sunk we hope to help you shake the funk so if you're good to hear some junk buckle up it's the junk monk podcast <laughs> that was so good. Isn't that good, right? Isn't that the podcast? <laughs> I did your job. Um, yeah, no, that was so epic. That was so cool. And like, how old were you? Were you like twelve? I know, I so t- Patty, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's really, it's funny. It's really not that bad because your voice again started off so deep. Like for a little boy uh-huh. that you're like, it doesn't really sound that different. I'm, of course, your voice will get deeper like as you get older. But didn't you start this when you were 12? I think so. You were 12 and now you're 14? Mm-hmm. You like literally went from being a child to a teenager on the show. How weird is uh, that? That is so weird. Call me Emmy Clark. Ooh. <laughs> That's where the surprise is. <laughs> um, we've had a... Uh, we filmed so many episodes. We like you guys, so many episodes. like I know you guys wanted more. I just, I you guys don't understand how much it's literally double the content to like edit and put out there. But it's even more than that because our cameras aren't great, so they die, and so we have to like 
stop and start the camera every two seconds and it mm -hmm. just makes it last even longer and it's like even harder so we appreciate that you love it um it was just it was a lot of extra work so yeah. but we are glad that you got to like see us and know our faces like we're not just like floating voices so yeah. that's really cool i i loved having our family on that was so much fun yeah having emma q my mom your sister your husband yeah. Well, we had John on too for the Sharona and Natalie. We did. Yeah. Remember, John was the 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 referee. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he that was, was actually on with the, with both of us. So that was a, that was a lot of fun. And he gets nervous about that stuff. And he did such an amazing job. Mm -hmm. Like he did so good. But yeah, everyone was was definitely mm -hmm. fun. Of course, we had amazing junk food, and we tried so many things. Like, can you imagine like the things that we like? I know it was like silly things like smash mellows, but it's like yeah. I tried random stuff that I'd never tried that you eat exactly. and vice versa. Like we're just expanding our minds just by just by the gimmick exactly. of eating junk food. That's crazy. And then people like I think Lindsay has said like I can't see something that's like about junk food without thinking about you guys. Yeah. Like, oh junk, like junk food, like junk book podcast. I'm like, yes, that's branding, people. It really is. <laughs> it's branding. Of course, our fan episode. We literally so had enough fun. people to have interactions. We got to see your face and know you guys and discuss an episode. That was just amazing. So heartwarming and touching. And like, I can't believe that it's over. And you guys will just have to continue for sure to reach out. I, I obviously won't be as consistent on the socials and stuff because it's just not, I mean, if I'm not putting out content, it's not realistic for me to like do that. Yeah. Um, but I definitely will try and hold me to this. I will make monk boxes because I didn't do any. I think I did one for season eight and then I stopped doing them because all of this was coming up and I was like, oh, I don't have time to like do the box and prep because I've been prepping since season eight. Um, so I will be giving away more monk boxes um, in the future. So at least you'll see me on social somehow. So we also still have... Um, swag if you want swag i have stickers and sunglasses and um stuff like that so if you guys oh and also guess about toby yes right guess about toby and i will let you know if you guys are right and if you're right within reason don't be like noah and send me 50 different answers and then be like oh it's finally right like <laughs> give me an educated answer and i'll send you a sticker okay um any final thoughts noah this is it. This is it. This is the last time I use my junk mug mug. Oh. I will, um. You're just gonna throw it out? Like what? In here. Oh, that's pretty satisfying. Ah, <laughs> uh, swag never tasted so good. <laughs> okay, guys. You also can buy a cup, too. I, have to, I order those, but yeah. you can still order them, so. Honestly, I, can you give me one? I mean, I don't know. I'll see why not. I really want one. Okay. That's so cool. Sure. <sighs> okay, guys. I was going to say we'll see you next time. Oh, that's so sad. Oh. We won't see you next time. This is it, Candace. What are you doing? What are you pointing to? The button? What button? Bye. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to know more about Candice, she's at Hardens and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noah L., subscribe to my vlog, Noah Hernandez, on YouTube. Also, you can leave us a voicemail at 323-366-0477 with your questions, comments, or just to show us some love. Don't forget to catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video, and of course, subscribe to our show. You'll thank me later.